Hey everybody, Winstreak here. Today we're going to be looking at timers and we will be using Unix time to track them. Uh, Unix time is built into Construct 3 so you don't have to add anything special. How Unix time works is it's essentially a time tracker that has been keeping time in seconds since I believe it was 1970 but essentially some long time ago and it just gives you this large number since it's been in seconds for that time. It does, however, grab it off of the user's computer. So if the users edit their computer time, it will affect your code and allow them to skip time. We will do a video later on ways we can try to block that a little bit. But for now, we're just going to be looking at simple timers. And you can see here we have four different text boxes. The first one's going to tell us the current Unix time, which is not something we'll ever really use in code. Uh, the second one will be just a normal timer. It'll count how many seconds until it's the time's up, which is great for small amount of times, but once we get into minutes or hours, it is kind of gross to look at. Uh, after that, we have a special timer one and two. Special timer one will break it down into minutes and seconds, so that'll make it look pretty when we get into a minute and some odd seconds or more, uh, all the way up until we need hours added, which is what my last timer will do. And as you can see, all the timers will continue to work no matter how high the time gets. It just becomes harder to understand what's going on. So the more you can break it down into a readable state, the better. And since you're the developer, you get to choose what to use depending on what the timer is actually for. And then we even have a bar here on the side you can show we got 22 hours, 30 minutes, 39 seconds left. And this bar will slowly tick down with our timer. These other bars are based off of 60 seconds here, so this won't tick down until we get to the last 60 seconds. And this one's based off of 3,600 seconds, so that won't break down either. Looking at the code to see how we did this, we have two variables here. Essentially we want our Unix time, and we want the time that we want the timer to count for. So every tick we will set our variable Unix to Unix time, and I'm doing Unix time divided by 1000 because Construct runs Unix time in milliseconds and we want that down to seconds because in most cases we don't need to break it down into milliseconds. You can obviously leave this in your game if you want to do split second timing for like races and stuff. That way you get a more precise time. Generally for timers, we're just looking for seconds and once they hit zero, they are done. So I'm going to preset this to seconds which will make my algorithms a little smaller down below so every tick we have that and then i break down into the next one of actually setting stuff up and we can just move this down here since they both have the same condition we will do every tick and we are going to set the text for my timer as seconds and then we're going to do the text for my two special conditions as well and if we look at this code uh, all we have here in the first one is setting the words Unix time and then our condition which is Unix time divided by a thousand and again that's not something we'll need to use literally ever outside of figuring out our algorithms so it's just good to show you where it comes from next we're gonna set our timer so our normal seconds timer and that's just gonna be countdown amount minus our variable Unix global and this works because We'll jump ahead here. When I set my countdown amount, I set it equal to the variable Unix global that I have, which is always up to date. And then I add the amount of seconds more that I want. And you can see here my 10 second timer adds 10. And then my minute timer adds 60 seconds. So we're always keeping it in seconds. So to get the time for the normal seconds, we are going to just grab that total amount we want and subtract the current amount in every tick this variable Unix will update and it will get closer to our countdown amount. If it ever equals or passes our countdown amount, we set those back to waiting for input. Moving on to our special ones, we are going to be using the remainder symbol, which is a percent sign. And how this works, we're going to take the floor value of our countdown amount minus our variable Unix, which is how we did it before, but then we're going to divide by 60 and that will give us the minutes. Then we're just auto adding in a colon here. Then we're gonna do a countdown amount minus var unix, remainder 60. So that'll give us the amount of remaining seconds after we use the top part to get the total minutes. And then we do the same thing up here to break it down one step further. So we get the normal equation right here 
divided by 60 for minutes, divided by 60 for seconds, and then we add on our last equation you just saw, but with a remainder because we only want the leftover minutes here. And then one more time, one more colon, we do it for just the seconds, and it's our normal equation with the remainder seconds, which will get us just seconds. And you can continue using these equations to go on to days and weeks and months, but since those won't be used too often in our games, I'm just going to stop it here. And then all of these are the same thing. We're just checking to see if our variable Unix passes our countdown amount. Once it does, we just wait for a new input and those go away. And then each of these is just how the buttons work. Nothing special here. If you want the code, I'll re-show them again. And then I have my fill bars. I have a lot of videos on different fill bars. So I'm not going to do anything with these. If you want them, I will throw a fill bar in the description and you can figure out how those work from there. But hopefully this helps you out with countdown timers and let me know if you need any extra help in the comments below. If you don't and you like the video, throw that thumbs up. Helps me out a bunch. Have a good one.